2010, we had five eagles admitted, which was a record then. I've been rehabbing for 21 years. There would be maybe an eagle come in maybe once a year or every other year. And then in 2009, I believe, we had three, which was a record at one time. And then 2010, we had five. 2011, we had 10. We can tell trends. We are the, one of the first ones to be able to tell Pennsylvania Game Commission, Department of Health, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, if there is something going on with our wildlife. And it came to us with a wing injury and also some respiratory problems. He had a small tear on his right leg and a lot of bruising along his chest and around his neck and face. What we found is that he has decreased vision in his left eye and a bruise to his left wing. We see certain symptoms. I had seen symptoms of lead toxicity long before we had them tested. So we're really hoping this bird can go free again. When the fledglings leave the nest, they're not independent at that point. They still need their parents to help uh, to feed them to help them learn how to hunt and uh, how to behave like a proper eagle. So their parents spend several weeks after they leave tending them and, and teaching them. We don't have a lot of good information about the original range of bald eagles. Uh, given their habitat preferences and what we see them doing now, it's reasonable to believe that they were spread along all the major watercourses along the Susquehanna and the Juniata and the Delaware rivers, nesting in the riparian corridors. So bald eagle populations declined from the 18th into the 19th century for a variety of reasons. There was declining water quality, direct persecution, but Basically, the collapse of the eagle population happened in the 60s and 70s with DDT. And so the whole eastern population, North American population, declined. And in Pennsylvania, it was reduced down to two or three nests in Crawford County. And that was a low point in the 70s of the eagle population. Eagles historically have been victims of direct persecution. There was a time when people would shoot eagles on sight, and many, many eagles were killed in Pennsylvania and across the country at that time. Now, laws are in place that make that illegal, and most people see value in eagles now. So as a protected species, we still do provide protections at nest sites in particular, and occasionally, rarely, a site is intentionally disturbed and people have to be prosecuted for the harassment of eagles. Uh, nests are protected under state law as well as under the Federal Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act. As the nation's symbol and as a treasured resource, we, we want to see this population continue to recover. Sometimes you might confuse them, even with the turkey vulture. It flies with a dihedral with a V-shape. Bald eagles always fly with their wings flat out. But for four and a half years, the young are dark in their head and dark in their tail. So they can be mistaken for other big dark birds like vultures or golden eagles. The distinguishing feature of a bald from a golden eagle is the whitish feathers under the wing. Inside, they call it the wing lining. But bald eagles are so much more common in Pennsylvania that really large uh, bird of prey with a flat profile, in other words, horizontal wings could well be a bald eagle. At the beginning of the reintroduction program, there were only two or three bald eagle nests left in Pennsylvania. The population was essentially decimated. There was a multi-state approach to bring birds from other parts of North America into the Northeast and uh, boost the population quickly. So about 88 birds were brought from Saskatchewan and were raised in Pennsylvania through a process called hacking and released into the state. Now, a lot of people might not be familiar with hacking, and hacking is simply a process of where young birds, usually nestlings, are raised without being able to see people. And when they reach the age that they would fledge or leave the nest, 
um, they're allowed to do so. And, and so they never imprint on people. They never learn that people are where food comes from. And that helps them be wild birds. So as the population declined and eagle reproduction failed, uh, they began to realize that the contaminants, particularly DDT, were creating a failure of the eggs to hatch. And the egg shells got thinner and often broke within the nests. And the population continued as the adults came to old age, but they weren't being replaced by young. And DDT was banned in 1973, along with the passage of the Federal Endangered Species Act that gave protections and reduced that, that threat to eagles and opened the door and basically set the stage for the recovery that we've experienced since. They're always susceptible to poisoning, either uh, consuming animals that have already eaten a poison and therefore have the poison in them themselves, or sometimes uh, unintended poisonings in animals. And, and the best example of that is probably lead. They can get lead from carcasses of animals that have been shot that weren't collected for whatever reason when the birds have access to them. In Pennsylvania, most eagles will stay in their nesting territory, even in the winter as long as the weather's mild. When the water freezes, they might have to move away from their breeding territory in order to find good foraging areas. The birds are basically going to move as far away as they have to to find open water. A lot of times that's a large river course. Sometimes it's a power generation plant where they have warm water as outflow, and that will keep water open even during the coldest times. And these are great places to find eagles concentrating you know, during harsh weather. There are places on all the main rivers, on the Delaware, on the Susquehanna, that are great for viewing eagles in the winter. But as long as we have mild weather, you might actually see the pair over near their breeding territory. They'll work on their nests all year round, including when we have nice weather in the winter. And the breeding season actually starts relatively early. They start working on their nests in December and January. He came in more stressed than some other birds we've had admitted because this is nesting season. So at this point in the season, his job is to deliver food to his mate. And all of a sudden, he can't get to his mate. He can't be bringing his food. He's in a box. He's enclosed. He's not surrounded by the natural sound. So he was a very stressed bird when he was admitted. The biggest thing is trying to get him to eat without stressing him too much. So we had to do some force feeding of food and hydrate him, and then at the same time giving him medication by mouth. So stressful all the way around because we had to handle him. And you have to be careful of that because you don't want to stress an animal out, especially an eagle out that is susceptible to having his immune system go down and then they all carry a fungal infection that could sprout at this time called aspergillosis, which could be fatal. So we tried to watch for that and reduce stress and, you know, try to keep hands off as much as possible. So nest building increases in December and January, roughly. It does vary by pair. And by late January, early February, the older established pairs might already be laying eggs and beginning incubation. But the bulk of our birds won't initiate incubation until mid March. So there, there's a lot of variation. They're the largest nests of birds in Pennsylvania. They look like a giant beaver den up in a tree. You know, lots of sticks. Some of them are very deep. Part of the reason they're that large is that they often go back to the same nest year after year and continually add material to the nest. Eagles take a long time. They're incubated for a long time until they hatch. They're in the nest for a long time until they fledge. They don't breed for the first time until they're four, five, or older. When we started the reintroduction program and tracking eagles for recovery, we were down to two to three nests in the northwest corner of the state. The hacking took place in the center of the state and in the northeastern corner of Pennsylvania. And as those young birds spread out, they, they didn't want to spread or didn't tend to spread very far. So initially, we had nesting along the Susquehanna, right here on Haldeman Island. 
and up in the northeastern corner of the state and then had the remnants that were left in the northwestern corner of the state. And if you look at how the birds have spread out over the years, they followed the water courses in those areas, moving up and down the Susquehanna or up and down the Delaware River, kind of taken large steps and, and slowly moved out across the state. We like to keep track of the eagles because of their restoration. We want to know how it's coming along. Because in 1980, there were only three nests in the whole state. Now, almost every body of water, you'll have an eagle nest near it. So we like to keep track of it just to see how the population is increasing. And it is increasing. So to monitor bald eagles in Pennsylvania, we try to keep track of each nesting attempt that happens all across the state, how far the attempt gets, whether they lay eggs or young are in the nest or young actually fledge or leave the nest naturally, and how many young manage to do that. It gives us an, an estimate of productivity in the state and would let us know if there's any sort of problems, hopefully, before they got out of hand. Um, after having such a wonderful recovery of the birds, the last thing we want to do is not see warning signs. We also monitor the winter distribution of eagles in Pennsylvania through a national survey called the Midwinter Bald Eagle Survey. Um, we have a series of volunteers that go out all across good wintering habitat in Pennsylvania and keep track of all the birds that they see and the age of those birds in a given small window of time. Now, in addition to trying to monitor what's actually going on with Pennsylvania bald eagles, the public really enjoys the birds, and, and we want to encourage that. To, to, to know eagles is to want to protect eagles and have them for the future. Um, there are many hawk watching sites across Pennsylvania that are great places to watch bald eagles. Uh, places like Wagner's Gap and Hawk Mountain are well known and well visited. But we also have a series of sites on the Game Commission website, uh, at least one in each region. It gives instructions on how to get there and, and hints about things in the area and uh, providing opportunity for folks that might not be close to a hawk watch site or might want to see birds a little bit closer to home. Bald eagle etiquette is actually really straightforward. You don't want to do anything that upsets the birds because by upsetting the birds, you can compromise their nesting attempt. They can fail. And sometimes that failure isn't because one person goes and visits a nest. It's because day after day, many people go and visit the nest. But it's common sense. Stay back away from the nest. Keep your voice down. Uh, no sudden movements. If you do anything, even if you're following those guidelines and the adults start to call a lot or act agitated, back away from the nest. It, it, like I said, it's, it's good common sense. Um, in general, we ask people to stay back a thousand feet from a nest. It's a good distance that seems to work well for most pairs. But even if you're at a thousand feet, if they get upset, back away. So there's loss of vision in one of the eyes. So compounding with that and the fact that um, it showed signs of having a concussion. He needs to build up flight stamina, head trauma, can be one day, two months. The main question will be whether his vision is sufficient for release. So I'm hoping within the next month he can go. And most people think of eagles as this really large, powerful, predatory bird. And they are. I mean, they've got strong talons that, that can kill things. But when you see them on the nest, they will very carefully ball up their talons and walk around in the nest, carefully avoiding doing anything that might harm eggs or nestlings. They're very gentle with the young. The, the young are very fragile. They, they have to be gentle with them. The vast majority of what people think about, about bald eagles and foraging is, is right. They're specialists on fish, especially during the breeding season. They're, they're catching and bringing a lot of fish to the nest. But fishing and hunting in general is dangerous and hard. So they will scavenge at every opportunity. They will take roadkill. They will 
scavenge off large mammals. This part of these stories we would hear about eagles taking livestock are probably animals that had died and that the birds were scavenging on the carcass, but they didn't actually kill the animal. They will steal fish from other birds. They're champions at taking fish from osprey and other fish eating birds and taking them for themselves. So they're all about getting the food back home as fast as possible and they're not too proud to, to get it the easiest way. One of the amazing facts that I found out though is he's banded, so I punched the numbers into the Fish and Wildlife database and it came up that the bird had been banded in the nest on 821 of 1987, which was exactly 25 years to the day of when he was injured and rescued and find out that the eagle was in fact one of our hand-raised hatchlings. So it was extremely interesting for us to have a bird that was 25 years old from our hand-raised hacking sites to be here in the glades and needing help again. The hacking that was done in Pennsylvania was part of a multi-state program to uh, boost the population in this part of North America. They were released in the area and slowly began to function like bald eagles. So as the eagle population recovered nationwide, the population was compared against the federal delisting plan, the, the recovery plan. And, and we achieved that in the early part of the 21st century where you know, bald eagles reached the level in which federal protection under the Endangered Species Act was no longer possible. And that was a great, a great point. Eagles are still state listed. In other words, it's a threatened bird in Pennsylvania, but we're closely following the recovery here in Pennsylvania to see when it will achieve delisting potential. In other words, achieve the management objectives that we've stated in our bald eagle management plan. We're looking forward to that day as well. Oftentimes, when someone finds an injured wild animal, that's their most intimate interaction. It's the closest they've ever been. It can often be a transformative experience for them to see the beauty and the magnificence of that animal and that can start them thinking about what's that animal role in the environment and what's the role of, of humans and how can we safeguard the environment both for these magnificent creatures and for our children. But when you have most of these animals that come in as a result of some interaction with man, whether it's windows, cars being shot, if we can make the difference to return species back, that's important to us be able to return them back as wild animals. This is not something that we've ever taken lightly. The animals need help. Humans, whether they mean to or not, tend to cause the issues. And we need to take a stance and, and try to help them. So for me, giving every animal that comes to our wildlife rehab center a chance is, is more than I could ever ask for. So watching him go free and having that opportunity to have at least a few more years in the wild for as old as he is and watching him go free again, it couldn't get any better than that. Give me a second to arrange him. Band two before we... Creator, take back my brother. I fly free for many years to come. So at the end of the DDT era, we were down to two to three nests in the northwest corner of the state. We released all those birds and the population slowly began to increase. So over 30 years, we've gone from three nests to 237 last year. And I believe we will break 250 for the 30th anniversary of the reintroduction of bald eagles. It's an incredible growth in a population, and it shows what 
people can do if they come together and they're willing to do what it takes to bring back a species.